Hello, everyone. I'm just going to give folks just one more minute to kind of trickle in. Nice. Hello, everyone. Good evening. I am Quinn Hegarty. I'm an internship and career advisor in the Career Center at Columbia College Chicago, and I am very excited to welcome you to tonight's very special edition of Free Summer Film School, parentheses for actors, the art of the self-tape. So in this business here, we're all about networking from a distance and getting to know each other better. So feel free to introduce yourself, you know, drop your LinkedIn and professional social media accounts uh, down in the chat below. We've got alumni in here, students, we've got people at various phases in their careers. So, you know, like, let's get some connections going from this as well. Uh, we will also be taking audience questions at the end of the panel. So please type your questions into the chat at any time throughout the program and we will get to as many as we can by the end. Uh, in addition, our speaker, Noel, from Gray Talent, has provided us with some audition sides that we will be sending to every participant after the session. That's the interactive part of this panel slash workshop. And you can take what you learned here, film an amazing sample self-tape of your own, and send it back to us for feedback. So look out for that. And with that, I'm going to turn things over to Noel Humbert, who is the assistant to the chair of theater here at Columbia College. Hi guys, how is everybody? Um, I love that I see some non-familiar faces and some familiar faces in this whole group. I'm so excited. Um, so like Quinn said, uh, my name is Noelle Humbert. I am the assistant to the chair of theater and also the coordinator of the senior showcase at Columbia College. Um, I, before that, was a talent agent for four years at Gray Talent Group, um, which is where I met Noel. He was my assistant. He's my better half. Um, and then I, before that, I was a talent or a casting director. Um, so I was a casting director for theater and commercials and television. Um, so that's kind of why I'm here today. Um, should, uh, Noel, do you want to go next and introduce yourself? Oh, wait, hold on. One, oh, we said we were going to bring up one show that we've binge watched during Stay at Home. And Quinn, what was yours? Oh, what was my show that I binge watched? Um, oh, geez, I didn't. I didn't expect that I would be asked this. I thought you all were just going to do it. Oh no, um, we we definitely want to hear from you too. Yeah, um, I watched all of Ozark, um, mm -hmm. so that was disturbing but fun. Lovely. Yeah. Um, mine, uh, I will go to the grave saying that one of the best TV shows on television is Married at First Sight. Um, it is from the same producers as Love is Blind, but you can now watch Married at First Sight on Netflix, and I highly recommend all of you do. It will change your life. Um, so, Noel, please introduce yourself and tell us something about you. Hello, um, I'm Noel, um, not to be confused with Noel. Uh, yes, when we worked at Great Town together, it was a lot of fun getting emails addressed to Noel that were meant for me and vice versa. Um, <laughs> so with that said, yeah, I am Noel Henry. Um, I am the theater agent assistant over at Great Talent Group currently. Um, what else? Uh, I did video production for roughly seven years before joining Great Talent Group. Um, it's the dream. I love doing it. Of course, theater is kind of not happening right now, but we're still making it happen. So here we are. Um, let's see. Um, the show I've been binging, Quinn already took Ozark, which is something I've also been disturbingly binging. But uh, I've also been binging Elite, which is a, it's on Netflix. Um, it's a uh, Spanish soap, like Spain Spanish soap opera. It is mwah, chef's kiss. It's, it's drama. It's beautiful people. It's rich people. It's, it's got everything you need. So I highly recommend if you're looking for something new and spicy. So yeah, um, I guess we'll turn it over to Phoebe. 
Hi, everyone. I am Phoebe Gonzalez. I went to school with Quinn, so we've been in and out of each other's lives for like almost a decade now. Um, well, yeah, we started in 2011, so. Wow, uh, time it passes. Yeah. <laughs> so I studied uh, acting, musical theater, and playwriting. I have predominantly focused on acting since graduating. I live, I'm from New York originally, so I lived at home for a year. Um, to like save up some money and also to see what that market was like and then ultimately decided I wanted to be in Chicago and do more regional based work um, and I've been really fortunate to do a good amount of that uh, in the last couple of years so I'm happy to meet y'all and the show that I binge watched so I do this horrible thing where when I really love a show that has already been out for a while and I get to the final season, it is too painful for me to conceive of it ending. So I just don't watch the last season. <laughs> so I watched Avatar, The Last Airbender, the whole way through for the first time ever. Um, and it absolutely destroyed me. <laughs> it was awesome. Fantastic. Sweet. Cool. Okay. So um, what we are going to do in this, everybody, is we're going to start with a panel discussion. Um, and that's going to be between like, it's going to be me and Phoebe and Noel kind of taking questions um, that are common questions that are asked about self tapes and kind of being an at home film school person um, and creating this business kind of by yourself in your in your own shelter in place station. Um, and we're gonna we're just gonna kind of talk about different things that we have learned um, both as a casting director, a talent agent, and an actor during this time. Um, and then after that, um, about halfway through, we are gonna switch to um, talking uh, talking about the art of the self tape and just like talking about the, the like, nitty gritty about self tapes. Um, different questions you may have about like, um, like how important are readers? Um, what should you do to edit your tape? Those kinds of questions. And at the end, we will have an audience Q and A. Some of the questions which we've already gotten um, from you guys about um, different questions about self tapes and, and auditioning via tape during this time. Um, so I hope that sounds great and interesting to all of you because we're all very excited to be here and be working with you guys. And I hope this will be super informational for you. Um, so to start off, we have the question, which is how has casting changed for agents, casting directors and actors during this pandemic? Um, so I'm gonna throw it over to Noel, who is a current talent agent to just kind of hear about what he has dealt with um, specifically within the past five months when it comes to working with an agent pandemic as an actor. And then Phoebe, we're gonna hear you about the actor side of things, about how things have changed for an actor. So Noel. Hello, yes, so on the talent agency side, um, it's been, uh, as you can expect, very interesting. Um, there was a bit of a learning curve, uh, probably the first month. Um, remember when we all thought we would return to our normal lives like in April, um, and it was just a, two, a cute little two week quarantine situation and everything will be fine after. Yeah, so um, that obviously never happened. Um, and as such, we had to adapt uh, which um, I'm happy to say we have pretty much like, it's been a few months now that we've kind of like settled into our rhythm, at least over at Gray. Um, the, the, the biggest thing that definitely changed was, um, you know, people don't go into the room anymore. So the quick thing that we learned was like, oh my gosh, everyone that we pitch and everyone that gets a request for an audition, we have to get that self tape, edit it, send it to casting. So there's been a lot more work on our end when it comes to self-tapes because self-tapes um, typically were kind of like the backup situation where like if, if you were in a show and we wanted you to and like we, we got an audition for you um, to be like let's say on like a like a Chicago PD or Chicago Fire you couldn't make it because you were in rehearsal you know you'd send a self-tape you know the typical situation. Um, that is now the situation all the time. Um, the one thing that we, another thing that we learned is um, the self-tape is pretty much, um, it's being in the room, which is, um, you know, a little bit daunting because, you know, obviously being in the room in a physical space with a casting director at a minimum, you know, and sometimes whoever, whatever creators may be involved, um, was the way to get an audition. And now, you know, the self-tape is pretty much that. That is the first first line when it comes to um, submitting materials for a project. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, there's been a lot more work on our size when it comes to self tapes, which is, you know, why we're talking about this now. Um, but yeah, I would say that's the biggest thing that's changed. So I'll put it over to Phoebe. Yeah, I mean, you said a lot of what I was already thinking. Um, obviously, theater self tapes are uh, pretty much non existent at this point because theaters are just unsure when they're going to be able to actually provide an audience um, safely and even like have a rehearsal hall safely depending on the size of the show so it is pretty much exclusively commercial auditions i i think i've gotten like one film audition for something that would be shooting uh you know way way in advance i've also been getting with pretty much every audition um like information on the production company, the casting directors, uh, uh, like COVID procedures, which is really heartening to receive. Um, and even if I like haven't, I've been able to reach out to my agent to be like, can you give me more information about how seriously they seem to be taking this current moment? Um, which I like really encourage everyone if you are auditioning to be doing because it doesn't make you difficult to ask that. It just makes you like a responsible, thoughtful citizen. Um, I would also say that like, the, the turnarounds have been pretty quick. Um, generally with commercials, turnarounds are quick. You know, you get something in maybe less than 24 hours and be expected to come in with like a few lines of copy memorized or just with like a few expressions and ideas about expressions ready to go in the room. Um, but it's also a lot about like improvisation, you know, like they'll be like, we need the feeling of like a Hallmark Christmas commercial. So how can you create that in your own home? Like maybe get yourself a blanket, like maybe have a mug. And also people are auditioning like with their partners and with their roommates because people want to adhere to social distancing on sets. So if you live with actors, awesome. Sweet. Um, I also, to add to that, I think there has been a huge increase in just voiceover based commercials. Um, the voiceover business has like really been booming because if you watch TV and you look at all of these commercials, if they can't film in person, sometimes they'll even reuse footage and just change the voiceover. In these um, are is, times. Yes, exactly. Um, so there, there has been a large increase of voiceover auditions for commercials, especially during this time. Um, oh, this is a question for you. Um, what do agents and casting directors do with self tapes? Do they store them in a file on their computer? Do they um, print out photos of them and put them on their wall? Um, do they send them across the country for international commercials without telling anybody? Like, what is the sitch? What happens to the tapes? <laughs> right, yes. Uh, surprising enough, I get this question so much. Um, regardless of how you send it over, YouTube, Vimeo, Google Drive, or whatever, we don't just receive the tape in whatever format you gave us and just like, you know, pass it over to casting. We first watch it. So every, especially if like, um, if you have an agent, when you get an agent, whenever you have an agent in your life, um, they'll still watch it. Um, they will we'll, at least a grade, we'll download it and then we'll still cut it, edit it together, kind of like make it our, uh, just make our own at our own title card, which is just like your name, the role, and like our, our name of the agency and the number. Um, and then we upload it to our private Vimeo server. Um, and in that way, like say if right now I've been working on like an open call for vocal casting and I have like 200 tapes to edit. So um, I will still download those, edit them myself. Even if you edit it it yourself, I'll still like cut it down to as much as I can just to just to get the tape part, um, add the title cards, and then put all in Vimeo, and then send it over to casting that way. So then it's all streamlined and easy for casting to access, you know, uh, part of our job is just making um, your materials readily available for casting as soon as possible and as easy and uh, the most accessible way. So then they can just like click play and like go for it. Um, we also keep our tapes at all times. So like you could have taped something like four years ago and we most likely still have it, which is great because for example, especially right now, um, I mean, this is not, a, like Phoebe said, theater's not happening, but when we were naive back in April or so, when theaters were still casting for musical theater shows, they were like, how are we gonna do a dance call? And then I was like, oh, well, a bunch of these people you requested have tapes that I know they danced in. And then I just like took those tapes from three years ago, um, cut them in for like to make a little dance reel. And then I sent it over to casting. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, every tape that you have is saved by your agent um, mm -hmm. in the event that they ever need it. But I mean, like 
let's see, like for this, for example, for this open call, I have a lot of my actors have been like, oh, can I use something, you know, from a few months ago? It's always great, just especially right now, to kind of get into the habit of just like, just, just keep the rhythm going. Um, it's best if you just like tape new material because, you know, you're, the, the, the craft never stops. You know, you could have, you could have improved if you did a tape like two weeks ago and you're like, oh, this tape that I did could t definitely fit the bill for this open call. It, you, you're still a different actor, you know, two weeks into the future than you were two weeks before. Mm -hmm. So it's always best just to, you know, get, you know, be, be in the rhythm and like, you know, just be in that world. Um, especially yeah. when a lot, not a lot is happening besides like commercials. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, on the, I can kind of explain what yeah. casting directors do with it too. So like, oh, yeah. Yeah. so ahead. after Noel, so say Noel sends me a bunch of tapes for, um, so it kind of differs between theaters and commercials and, and television. So if Noel sends me a bunch of tapes for a theater, usually what I'm doing is organizing like a very nice email that um, lists all of the people that are auditioning or like a spreadsheet and I'll send it to the director. So the director can go in review all the tapes um, via like usually Vimeo or YouTube links, depending on what the agency uses. Different agencies use different platforms. Um, so most of the time, if you have an agent and you send a tape, um, they are uploading it onto like a private platform where it can't be viewed. This is a big thing when you guys are sending in tapes, like if you're uploading it to YouTube, send it as unlisted, not private. Because when it's unlisted, then people can't just look up and just see your audition. Like if you type your name into YouTube, then it doesn't pop up if it's unlisted. Um, if it's private, that means nobody can access it. So if you're sending tapes I via YouTube, I highly recommend putting it as unlisted um, so that it is basically only accessible for people who have the link. Um, so for theater, they're creating a big spreadsheet for the director to go in and, and list their notes to kind of create a dialogue that would usually happen in an audition room when everybody is there. Um, so when you can't have a dialogue when everybody is there, you go to a spreadsheet. Um, and then for TV, film, and commercials, there is this platform that is called Casting Networks. Um, so Casting Networks, you are able to take people's self-tapes and you can upload them to casting networks and basically create like one big platform that creates like a little individual profile for every single actor that will show your headshot, your resume, like, and most actors have profiles on casting networks. It's like a big platform for actors to find jobs on and all agents have a casting networks um, like platform of their own to put their talent on. So then all casting has to do is send the client a link to the casting network's profile and the video is stored on that profile. Um, so whereas like with theater, it's usually stored on the agents or the actors profile with casting networks, they will take it and upload it to the casting networks profile. And it is like a safe, secure profile that is sent just to the client. Um, we actually used casting networks for our senior showcase this year. And it was like, so great. I got a lot of great feedback from all the agents being like, thank you. This was the most accessible, like clear, like lovely profile for every single person. So um, that's kind of something that you guys could do right now is you could get like actors access and casting network profiles to kind of like poke around and look at different projects and what the what the breakdowns look like, but that's where like all the videos and auditions go. So yeah. Um, a question for Phoebe, since she has had some fun adventures in filming in the past few weeks. Um, are any shows or commercials actually shooting now? And like, what is the process like going? Like, how does it look now that we are in this crazy pandemic time? Yeah, so, you know, it was surprising to me as well, but things are shooting again. Um, I have noticed definitely an uptick, an uptick in the number of auditions, specifically for commercials I've been doing in the last couple of weeks. Um, and I actually shot two different commercials uh, this past week, one on like Monday of last week and one on Friday. And they are operating, I had like two, two very different experiences on set. One was with like a really, really tiny crew. It was like four or five people, everyone was masked and everyone was maintaining social distance at all times. Um, 
the like I was given a form to fill out. I was I was given a temperature check. Um, there were people on set for both sets whose literal job it was was to like approach you if you were doing anything that could be perceived as a risk and be like, hey, uh, please be careful. Please don't do that. Um, and everyone was just very appreciative of that person's presence on camera. Um, and in terms of like auditioning for one of those, I like actually had a call back over Zoom. Um, always check your internet connection is strong before you try to do that because I have friends who like didn't know that their PS4 was still on and trying to download like 15 gigabytes of data when they went in to try to have an, like a great callback that they were excited for. So always, always like log in in advance, test that everything is working. Uh, if you're gonna have like a, a an in-person <laughs> technological callback. Um, and one of them, I, I just submitted an audition with my partner because they were looking for uh, partners to shoot a commercial. And within a day, I got the call that I was on hold. Um, they had some questions about like wardrobe that we had available to us, about um, like tools that we had available to us and all um, things were done uh, remotely. So a lot of times if you're going to be on set right now, you're going to be providing your own clothing um, or like wardrobe who is still hired and still a presence on set might get you like supplementary items. But um, it's always good to have like a few, uh, like I have my like corporate look and I have my like bohemian look and I have my like young hip mom look because I know those are the three things that I go in for auditions most frequently um and I have like one to two variations on each of these which I found really helpful because it allows the um costumer and also the people behind the like casting the virtual casting table to feel that they have options uh like within the framework of your current existence sweet I love that um Great. So we're going to kind of shift to the art of the self tape and kind of talk about all the weird different facets of taping at home, which like, I'm not going to lie to you guys, it can be one of the weirdest experiences of your lives, like taping at home and like watching it back and like suddenly being a director and and a producer of your own personal audition. Um, so the first question I'm gonna throw to Phoebe again. Um, so, and, and Noel might touch on this, I might touch on this, it's kind of a bigger question, but like what makes a good self-tape? Like how much money should you be investing in your self-tape setup at home? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that I can give a specific number. I think it depends on like what you are comfortable with. I will say I don't think that you need to spend that much money. Um, I went on tour uh, two years ago and I really wanted to make sure that like no matter, because we stayed in a range of hotels. We were in like Hilton's and like Falling Apart Breast Western. So I wanted to make sure that I had a consistent backdrop and like that I could consistently set up something without like exclusively relying on natural light to make me look nice and I spent under a hundred dollars and that was for two backdrops and uh two sets of lights uh with like various filters um so it is possible I frankly having spent a tour like lugging around a bag with all that equipment would recommend a ring light just for like ease if you are going to be traveling and because I do think that it is depending on the ring light you get, it, it gives you like the, the most freedom in terms of like how you want to set up your shot. Um, but I really, I think you can easily spend under $100. I, I don't think that you need to um, go broke trying to set things up. And in terms of what makes a good setup, I, I weirdly love self tapes. Um, I, I've done a lot of theater self tapes, which feel insane when you first do them, but it, it allows you like the gift of control that you never get in a room. And of course I would rather be face to face with someone because human connection is how we get to work, but you are never going to have an opportunity in the room unless you have the most patient casting team behind the table in the world to do it again and again and again until you really feel like you've done it to the best of your ability until you've really like explored every version of that scene with a reader in the room with you um, mm -hmm. 
or, or like, oh, I, 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 I feel like the emotion was equally felt in both of those takes, but like in this one, frankly, like the angle is better. So that's the one I get to pick because I get control over how I look and how I appear. And also I'm going to do kind of a stunt right now because I think that so much of self-saving effectively is like an ability to improvise. Um, I am currently sitting in bed. I think maybe my, my pillow has uh, snuck out a couple times. Um, I have, I'm pretty well lit. Part of that is because of the natural lighting coming into my wide open windows. The other part is because I literally, I'm moving, my apartment is a disaster. I <laughs> literally have a light pointing <laughs> at me right now. And my computer, which is giving me like a very straight on angle right now, is sitting on top of a garbage can. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm here to tell you, you can make yourself have a really comfortable at home <laughs> setup with like, very little. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah if, if it's okay, if I oh, go go no, no. You go ahead. Oh, I was I was just gonna like piggyback off of some things that Phoebe said, but like. No, you go go no. Oh, okay, cool. I will go then. <laughs> um, yeah, I definitely want to uh, second what Phoebe said, especially about um, spending money. You do not uh, you do not need to like shell out the bucks to get a good setup. Um, and I definitely have, uh, in my experience, even before I was working at Gray, I had a lot of friends tape with, like, actually, you know what, a few weeks ago, a friend of mine uh, shot it, my roommate, um, shot, I shot a tape for them. I literally put my iPhone wedged, well, iPhone on my, um, on our, like, bar stools, and I flipped one over to, like, heighten it, and then I, like, literally wedged my wallet in between the phone and the stool so it could get, like, an eye-level view and we like did it against our like front door and it was great. Like I was like, what am I, am I a filmmaker? Um, so yeah, you don't, yeah. but at the same time, you do not need to be a cinematographer or a DP or anything to put a good self tape together. Like Phoebe's example is perfect. Um, yeah, work with what you got, um, especially right now. A lot of people, I mean, the reality is a lot of folks are hurting for money. Um, and like at least over at Gray, we're like big proponents of like not having people spend money you can work with what you have and still have a great shot. Um, when it comes to, I guess, like hard and fast tips, I also second feed you with the ring light. Um, ring lights like just have like a really good. Waking up at the right time and seeing mm -hmm. what like light hits your window. Like sunlight can be some of the most beautiful, forgiving. Like sunlight through a window is Absolutely. like, God, like it can save you millions of dollars and like change your life. Like it mm -hmm. always makes skin look really nice like it, it like natural sunlight just wake up early one day and be like oh interesting between like nine o'clock and eleven o'clock it looks really nice so like yeah. you can do it like just do some test shots mm -hmm. I know some of you here in this zoom probably know that there are no which windows work during certain times <laughs> of the day for your selfies use it for your self tape like 100 percent guarantee that it works I'm not kidding Anyway. Um, one of my favorite stories from when I was an agent was we, um, there, there, so often, um, if you have an agent or if you're, sometimes if you're just out of town or like in the most inconvenient of circumstances, you will get a self tape request. And like, it is always almost always in the most inconvenient of circumstances. Um, so you kind of have to like figure something out. So we had a client who got a self tape for Westworld that was due in like by the end of the day. So she was flying out of town that day and she was in an airport. So she literally went into an airport bathroom with an iPhone and asked a stranger to self tape her crying on cue in a bathroom in an airport. And she booked a recurring role on Westworld by like finding the best lighting in the airport, asking a stranger, filming herself cry, like sobbing on cue. Like, so like you guys really, like you can be creative, like find the best like blank wall, even if it means like, oh, okay, this picture is on like a nail. I can just pull the picture off and put it back on. Um, like that is a really great way. If you happen to have like 
a wall in your house that is a different color um, that really like accentuates you better than one other wall. Like figure that out. Like there are really great ways. Um, one thing that I, I say do not do is please do not self tape outside. Um, please do not go like into the wild to, to self tape. Even please if it don't. says person's outside, please don't do it. Um, do like, yeah, if it says like this person, at a car dealership like please don't go to a car dealership like we mm. yeah. did noel drop out i think she did i think she did just for a second but i'm sure she'll be back um will be, yes. yeah but she told the west world story which is my favorite thing ever <laughs> um so Let's let's move on to readers. So, um, how important is having like a live reader or a live accompanist? And I think we'll go to Phoebe for that one. Um, I think that as much as you can, go for it. Uh, an accompanist is going to be hard unless you like live in a musical theater household, which probably some of y'all do. Um, I do not anymore, but I have a good friend who I've worked with a bunch, who is a great music director, who I know that like with a little advance notice, I can send him my material and he will turn it around and give me like an accompanying track within a day or two. Um, mm -hmm. So again, you like work with what you have available to you. I would say like pre-pandemic, <laughs> like find the reader that you know sets you up for success. Find someone you are comfortable with. Don't worry about the, the like gender of the reader. If you know that the relationship that you already have to like this other actor uh, or friend maybe that you've chosen uh, is, is really gonna like light a fire under you for this take. Um, I, and I, Noel can speak to this too probably, but I, I, I do feel like generally, if like the scene is between a, a man and a woman and your reader is a woman, it doesn't matter. It's not going to throw anyone as long as Absolutely. you are like doing your work, you know? Mm -hmm. Casting literally does not care who the gender or like how, how like your reader identifies at all. Um, okay. It will not affect them. They are solely focused on your performance alone. So, yeah. yeah. And I, I would also like, I, the some of the best self tapes I have done have been um, with people that I already had a working relationship with, mm -hmm. with people that that like I I that like speak the same language as me uh, when it comes to uh, like taking the work seriously, when it comes to uh, like taking an audition seriously. I have in fact like you know tried to do a rush job with someone that I like didn't really know who like literally walked into my room to self tape with me like drinking a beer. <laughs> And I was like, whatever, I'm a professional, I'm going to do the work. But like, I still had a few hours and the person who lived down the hall could shoot it with me instead. And they came and took it very seriously and gave me a lot more to work with. And I am so glad that I reshot it. I know that we're working on like really rapid schedules, especially right now. But um, I think like an authentic connection, whatever sets you up for success is like what's most important. And I have also like been FaceTimed in to help friends with self-tapes who live alone. Um, I don't know how ideal that is to receive as a casting director, but it's certainly like an option that uh, people have been using in the past couple months. And I know that this is something that Noelle has said previously, and I just want to speak on her behalf. Um, don't film, don't um, audio tape yourself saying the other character's lines because mm -hmm. Noelle has spoken to getting that and just having that <laughs> just be really weird. And, you know, the, the way you have to time it out and the way that it just, yeah, it's, it doesn't quite work. And I know that yeah. you know, you've heard that before as well. It was kind of phenomenon that we ran into as well um, in the beginning of the pandemic, which was like totally understandable. But I think now that we learned to adapt more and we figured out like other accessible ways to have a reader, mm -hmm. um, yeah, just don't kind of like going outside hard and fast rule also don't pre-record yourself as a reader yeah and then we actually had a, a question just come in that's kind of uh, piggybacking on this do you recommend having a fellow actor as your reader or can you have someone like a roommate who can just read the lines kind of plainly um i think it totally depends on 
the the roommate slash friend slash actor. I mean, mm-hmm. it is ultimately about setting yourself up for an environment where you are going to feel really comfortable, where you are not going to be shy about like emoting as hard as you may be required to. Um, I have done really good self tapes with both actors that I like really respected and admired and worked with a bunch and like partners who I know like love and care about my career, you know? So I think it, as much as you can get somebody who is like rooting for you and is going to invest in the words that they're saying and not just like monotone it, uh, uh, go for it. But there's no rule that says that the only people who are going to invest in the words that they're saying are actors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Basically, what Phoebe said. I we found out one of our actors reads really well with her uncle, who had never, who's never acted before. He actually doesn't even like watch TV that much, uh, but it worked it worked out for her in the pandemic. So, yeah. Pretty soon, that uncle is going to be booking roles. <laughs> Hey, it has happened before. People have been like, who is that reader? Is that, right. <laughs> bring in that mom. That mom's so good. Yeah. Like, yeah. wow. Right. <laughs> um, I'm so sorry that I froze up. My internet connection decided to um, tell me that it was no longer time for me to be working. Um, but I am back. Um, okay, have we talked about um, the difference between a theater self-tape and a film self-tape? Not yet. Have we not? Okay, Noel, would you like to take that one for us? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, first off, uh, they, yes, there is a difference. Um, they, it mostly lies in the framing. Um, and I'll get into the more nuancey things in a little bit. But for theater self tape, are we giving them the cheat sheet, by the way? Is that a Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm okay. going to send so, that to Quinn, and then it'll mm-hmm. be sent off. Yes. OK, great. Um, so there's a self tape cheat sheet that we will be sending you after this panel. But um, the main thing that the main difference between theater self tape and a film self tape is the framing. In a theater self tape, uh, you're go- we generally uh, want you to frame like just below the waist. Um, again, of course, give yourself a little bit of headroom. So like mine's not a great example, but like Phoebe's great example actually, like you know, an inch above the top of the frame. Um, so yeah, so then the casting director can kind of see you move in the space, kind of you know, in live theater. Uh, for the film self tape, it's going to be a lot, of, uh, a lot tighter shot. It'll typically just be um, like your elbow. I'll try to emulate it here, but it'll be like your like mid chest, um, elbows, and then you'll you're pretty much like we we want to see your face. It's an on camera audition, so we we need to see what you look like on camera. Um, so those are the main differences. Um, when it comes to the more nuanced things. Uh, of course, like I said, I'm, I'm the theater agent assistant over at Gray. So for theater, I like to see a lot of, I like to see how you move in the space, move, how you would move on a stage. Um, so give yourself some room. That also doesn't mean um, have someone operating your camera and moving it with you. You wanna give yourself enough space that the camera is static. You can move in the, in the tape without having to do any like crazy choreography. Um, because that's all, whenever a tape moves, it, it like throws off the casting director. Um, as for film, um, film self tapes, there may be situations where, you know, like we said, like you want to, you want to frame it like pretty tight, but it may, um, you may like start sitting and then you have to like get up or something, or you're, you're standing and then you have to sit down. Uh, it's best to frame the tape in a way that you can kind of work with the scene without having to move the camera. If you a- only move the camera, I say if you absolutely have to, but make it like the absolute last resort for, for any self-tape. Um, yeah. Is there anything else that anyone wanted to add? Or if we do, any situations you think? No, I don't, well, you. so you guys are gonna all get um, this, Thing that I created called the self-tape cheat sheet. Um, Noel served as my lovely model oh, yes. for all the photos. Um, uh, those I of you forget. who were, yes, it was great. It was his modeling debut. He was paid zero dollars. Um, and uh, any of you on this call who were in Senior Showcase, which I know there are three of you who are in Senior Showcase, you have already received this. Um, but it is like a really quick and dirty guide of like, hey, this is framing. These are some like hot tips. These are, this is extra information that you might need. Um, it is super, super helpful. Um, so I will send that to Quinn and he will send it out to everybody as well. Um, it is a great thing to just have on, on file for yourself. 
Um, great, okay. Um, how important is editing your own tape? I'll kind of take this one. Um, so editing your tape, um, it is really, really helpful if you do not have an agent to be um, editing your own tape together so it is one kind of cohesive package. Um, it is kind of difficult for uh, casting directors who are working with actors who do not have agents to be getting a like um, one tape that's just a slate one tape that is one monologue, one tape that is a scene, one tape that is a song. Like usually like as a casting director, me, when I get those, I end up editing them for you. Um, I usually don't go back and say like, hey, can you edit this? Um, but there are a lot of like really, really great um, like free editing softwares on the internet. Um, if, if you have any sort of iPhone or Mac, that is free editing software right on there. Um, I know we, uh, or like when I was at Gray, I used iMovie. Um, we always just use iMovie. It's super easy to cut and paste things. Um, if you have an agent, um, they will, um, yes, um, they will edit it for you typically. Um, as, as I know, like, as we said, all agents are different, so like when, at Gray, we get your tapes and we edit them together and then we put them on our Vimeo and send them out. Um, so it is very, very helpful. Of course, if you don't have that kind of technology, just send in the clips. Like it's, it's absolutely fine just to send in the clips. It's absolutely fine to go straight from your slate into a, um, into a scene. Like that is, is completely fine. Um, we got a question that was, uh, should we always slate even if not bleed? not directly asked for on the call. I always say yes. Um, I think it's really, really great for, for uh, we, what I always say to do is do a full body slate, especially if we are like in pandemic world as we are, um, doing like a close up, like how I am framed right now, zooming out to full body, and then saying like your name and your height. If you're under 18, then you have to say your age, but I don't think anybody in here is under 18. Um, if you're over 18, you do not have to say your age ever. Do not do that. Um, but name and height is, is pretty much the main thing. Um, every once in a while, you will get like a call that says like, hi, we would like you to hold a piece of paper that says all this information on it do that. Um, every once in a while, they'll say like, hey, state your name, height, and the place that you're based out of. Um, a lot of like LA and New York projects will do that. So do that. But the basic like standard way to slate is just name and height, full body slate, end it. Um, yeah. So how important are readers and accompanists? And what do I do if I don't have one? I believe you guys touched on this while I was frozen out of this entire universe. Yes. Did you guys talk about accompanists? Not so, um, I think, I think Phoebe touched on it a little bit. Okay. Um, Phoebe or Noel, do you want to touch on like the importance of having an accompanist or a recording or anything like that? I think Phoebe can take it. Yeah, she yeah. kind of touched up on it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I talked about how I don't, I don't have a piano in my home. I don't, I don't accompany myself. I don't have anyone who can accompany me in my home, but I have a, a very trusted friend who was a music director. Mm -hmm. um, who I'm able to get recordings from. And I also have like a speaker set up and I always, you know, test it out to make sure that it doesn't, it's not like booming too loud. If I know that I'm going to be like belting up into the stratosphere, that obviously affects the volume <laughs> of the music as well. Um, but yeah, I, we, I think that was most of what I had to say. I know. No right. mm -hmm. And I, I think the other thing is that, you know, there's a lot of music directors uh, and, yes. you know, musicians who work mm -hmm. with actors who are out of work right now and would be more than happy for a very mm -hmm. nominal fee to record a track for you yes. and, you know, work with you on that, record it in the right key for you, um, kind of work with you on all the different um, factors you need to take into consideration. And yes. that'll be so much better than like a karaoke track. Yeah. If you, also, if you go to Columbia, like, contact your musical theater professors like Jermaine Hill who is on the Columbia staff for musical theater he's the musical theater coordinator he is one of the best accompanists in the city guys like if you're at CCC you truly have these people at your fingertips Andra Vela Simon also amazing 
also one of the musical theater teachers. Um, Daphne, you asked the question, um, can you have a reader through FaceTime or Zoom? Um, absolutely. Daphne, you and I have done self tapes over Zoom and they have always been amazing. Um, so like if you guys have a Zoom, like, or like even um, a lot of people are using like Google Hangouts, all these kind of different platforms. A lot of the time you can pin the video to one person and you can do like, you can just hear like the other person reading with you over, over like Zoom, but it'll just be like framed on you, which is a really, really great way to do this. Um, I've also seen other people like turn on their um, like camera on their computer record and then take their phone with somebody on speakerphone and put it near the speaker and play with like how far away they can put it so it sounds normal um, in order to, to tape like that. Um, one thing that has come up before um, is I have gotten self tapes in the past where it's like somebody is somebody has pre-recorded themselves saying the other lines and then mm. will like say the line and play a recording of them saying the other lines. Don't do that. We always know mm -hmm. that it is you and it's really <laughs> weird because it just sounds like you're talking to yourself. Um, and then something other people have done is like, they will just like sit and wait and pretend that somebody else is saying the other lines and then Oh, yeah. and then like wait to say it back. So <laughs> I will put this out there. If any of you on this call ever need a reader, I am always happy to be your reader. Like I am always mm -hmm. happy to do it. If you ever need somebody to reach out to, I am always here to do it. Like you have my email, it's in the chat. Like, please do not send a tape like that because I know for a fact there is one person in the world who will do it for you now. It will all, I will always be here for you. <laughs> um, so there's that. And we've got, um, Austin, you know, we've got Daphne, Matthew, yes, Sam, yes. all of people. Um, and then it looks like we have someone who is a pianist who's a recent music major graduate who has offered their services as well. Which so is amazing. That. Go That's for awesome. it, guys. Like some, I think somebody was like, this is networking. Like, yep. yeah, you're 100% mm -hmm. right. Um, okay, next question is, how much can I ask a casting director? Like, if I get in, in some information either from a regular, like, casting post or from my agent how many questions am i allowed to ask about the project or or like the circumstances or covid19 stuff or anything like that um noel do you want to headway that one yeah of course right. um at least uh, well at least on the agency side of things um what's nice about having an agent is that uh you we are like your middleman for communicating with casting so um my thing is there are no dumb questions um, I'd rather you ask all the questions uh, to clarify how we can best put your tape together for casting to see. Um, even I have prefaced casting with like, hey, this sounds dumb, but like, do you need, do you need like this? Or does this song have to be acapella or something? And they'll, and they'll totally be like, oh no, it's fine. Like, we're glad that you made sure. Um, yes, it is acapella. Which, go, sorry, going back to the companies thing, if casting needs acapella, they will say so. If not, always just, always have an accompanist, just always have a track, have something. Um, just don't do acapella unless it's, it's explicitly asked for. Um, so yeah, for on my end, there are no dumb questions. I'd ra I do not mind asking casting. I'd rather clarify those things because I want you to see, succeed. I want you to present the best material for us to bring to casting. Um, let's see, what else is there? I feel like there was something else I wanted to say and it's like escaping me. <laughs> Um, well, no, we talked about briefly, like in advance of mm -hmm. this, letting your questions be like well-informed questions. Like you can mm -hmm. ask yes. as many okay. questions yeah. as they are, just like make sure right. that you've done the research in advance. Right. Don't just ask something yeah. you could Google. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you, before you ask it, um, check Google and see if, you know, if anyone else has asked this question. Um, it's also, I would say it's okay if like, you know, people that are involved, see what they got, but all in all, just Google it and see if you can find it. Mm -hmm. um, make sure you're the most informed before you present your question to either your agent or casting if you don't have them. So, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And I would yeah, just piggyback, of course, I, I, mm -hmm. I would just piggyback, if you're, if you're asking a question that might mean more work from you, be prepared to do it. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I, I have, I mm -hmm. did a, a like theater self tape audition at the beginning, what, you know, in, in the beginning times of this. And mm -hmm. 
after a like thorough read of the script, it became clear that of the like multiple roles I was auditioning for, each of them had different accents. And there was no mention of accents in the audition, uh, but I knew that I could do all of those accents comfortably and without getting tripped up on my lines. So I was able to turn around and be like, do they want different accents? Because if they do, I can totally do that. You know, and they mm -hmm. had been like, you, oh, great. If you can, great, do it. Um, but it wasn't included because they didn't need it. Um, mm -hmm. Or, or you know, if, if it is like an open call and you have like less familiarity with the, the theater mm -hmm. and your agent has set it up for you, I have like an example of a, of a well-informed question, I think is being like, you, you know, I have this song and I have this song. This song shows me as like more of an ingenue. This song shows me as like more of a firebrand. Which one do you think is more appropriate given what you know of what this theater is looking for in my mm -hmm. age range or demographic, you know? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Rather than just what Absolutely. song should I sing? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. There are some questions where we've gotten from our actors where they're like, what should I do? Um, and then like- What should like, I wear? I, I literally, yeah, it's like, I literally can't answer that question because I don't know you as only, you, only you know yourself as a performer. But going yeah. off of what Phoebe said, have that stuff ready. Um, I love when my actors are like, hey, here are two songs, what should I do? I'm like, great, you already did the work? I just, on my knowledge of like what this casting director looks at, uh, needs and likes, I can like look at both and I'll just be like, great, let's go with take two mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. I think a great piece of like advice for a lot of that is have options, but make a decision. So mm -hmm. you can have like these backups of like, hey, I worked on both of these songs. They're all ready to go. Or like, I have these three outfits. So like, mm -hmm. Like, this is the decision I'm making, but I also have these options, which is, like, really, really helpful, especially in the self-taping world of, like, like, for example, um, when you send your agent tapes or when you send casting directors tapes. So what I would say is when you send casting directors tapes, if you don't have an agent, please do not send them, like, hey, these are three takes I did. Only send mm -hmm. one, like just choose one. But if you have an agent that you're like, hey, I did these three different takes, like choose whichever one you think is the best. Like that is mm -hmm. your second opinion. That is your safeguard. That is the person that's going to help that to yeah. like make, help you make that decision because you did that work and now they're able to kind of look from the outside. But if you're mm -hmm. emailing a casting director directly without an agent in audition, just send them like your one, your best, your rock star take that you feel the most confident in because they're just going to honestly look at it and just click download on one. Like they're not like, they don't have the time to look through all of them. So like, just be confident and make that choice. And if they want more, they will come back to you and ask for it. Mm -hmm. I think cool. two teeny tiny things yeah. um, on that is if you are asked to redo a self tape either from your agent or for casting it is a it is a good thing because if they yeah. were not seriously considering you they would not they wouldn't give you the they time wouldn't reach out you yes. know? <laughs> but sometimes it feels like annoying and like you've done something wrong but like oftentimes it just means that they really like you and want to make sure that like you can play a different age or that you can mm -hmm. take a note um and then the the only other thing i was going to say especially with this current moment as we continue to say if you have a callback for something that it is exactly the same material i think it is appropriate and no you can correct me if you disagree mm -hmm. with someone on the agent side of things to be like great they're calling me back with exactly the same material does that mean they want me to replicate exactly what i did to show that i can mm -hmm. or do they is there a note that they'd like me to take you know no yeah i backed that up especially i mean again <laughs> This is a uh, interesting time, but um, when theater when theater was still auditioning things like back like early on, and there were some shows that were like um, like older shows like Shakespeare and like gosh I can't remember there was another one, but anyway, um, like more like classic material, um, yeah they would just like call you back and there would be like there, it was the same side. Um, I totally like ask casting, hey, do you have like a note for them? Like, cause yeah, cause we also don't want you to just send the same tape, so. Totally appropriate to ask for feedback if you get a call back mm -hmm. and it's the same side. So yeah, yeah. thanks Phoebe. Um, Phoebe, what are some tips and tricks for getting like the best performance out of yourself when you are sheltering at home and creating a self tape when things are crazy outside and you're just like really trying to hone in the best kind of situation that you can set yourself up for to create the best self-tape possible. Yeah, um, 
a great and epic question. Um, <laughs> the thing that I've already said a bunch of times that I'm probably going to continue to say a bunch of times is as much as you can set yourself up in a way that you feel comfortable, you should. What like whatever that takes. And I also think that like on a really basic level, just give yourself way more time than you think that you need. Just way more time. Because you never know. You might think that you really have it and you feel really good about it. And then in doing it a couple times, you discover something totally new about uh, the character or about like your specific take on the character, which is like why you're going to get cast. And then you want to, and then you're like experiencing this new thing and you want to make sure that it's fully in your body to get like the best take you possibly can. So I always set aside like, one to two hours, even if it's a really short thing, because you also like are gonna have to edit it, uh, maybe, depending on uh, the submission, and you never know how long it's gonna take to upload. I mean, I have had like 30 second videos take 45 minutes to, to like transfer over WeTransfer, and I've had like six minute videos take five. So there are just so many things that are unpredictable about self-tapes that are not about an in-person audition. So I think setting aside as much time as possible uh, is essential. And I also think that this goes back to the reader question. Um, a thing that I have like actively worked on for a long time is not feeling bad about like taking up someone else's time. Like trust that if they've agreed to help you with this self-tape, it's because they genuinely want to. <laughs> and if they like have an emergency and have to go, they're going to go. But like, I have definitely wanted to do one to two to five more takes on a thing because I feel like I almost have it. And been like, mm, I've already done this for longer than I thought I should. So I'm not going to like make this person stay. Because more often than not, we are self-taping with other actors and they know that like, you're going to turn around and do them a salad too. Mm -hmm. So I think as much as you can remove additional stressors from your life, like worrying if your friend wishes that they were somewhere else, um, you should. And I, it's also knowing about like what personally will put you at ease. So like I know, especially for theater, uh, less so for commercials, that if I can see myself as I'm filming, like if for some reason I have to film on my computer, although I usually film on my phone, I will be in my head about what I look like, mm -hmm. about whether like my exhale at that like intense emotional moment made me look fat. Like none of that is helpful. And none of that has any effect, has anything useful about the character that I am playing. So put yourself in an outfit that's comfortable. If you're only shooting from the waist up, like wear your sweatpants with a nice top. Like as much as you can set yourself up to feel good and to not be second guessing yourself, because we're already doing that so often in this industry, uh, you should. Mm -hmm. Sweet. I love that. Yeah. Um, so let's kind of go to some audience questions since we are kind of swinging into, well, one other thing, this is misconceptions and what not to listen to. Mm -hmm. Um, so going off of Phoebe, like, um, this is a time where collaboration is so important because we are, this community, we are all relying on each other to produce this like new wave of bizarre COVID-19 like faced art. Um, so we really are all relying on each other, but I like all of the younger actors in the world um, and, and actors that spend a lot of time working with other actors, it's really easy to get into this weird mindset of like, well, I'm helping this person with this self tape, but like, why aren't I auditioning for this? Um, or like, hey, I um, like, since all this is going on, should I be checking with my agent every day to ask them what they're submitting me for? Um, like it, you kind of fall into this like pit of like, um, like desperation because you're not sure where things, what things are going on in this world. But just remember like, everybody is here to rely on each other and to help each other. And that is not something that we need to like internalize and create this like complex where we're like, oh my God, what if I'm not doing enough? Like, I promise you, you're doing enough. Like if you feel like you are doing like the best that you can and like who, like you could go through this whole thing and not make a single self tape or do anything like that and still have like 
made your life better. Like we are not saying like through this, that like you should be auditioning for something every day. Like that is mm -hmm. not the case. That is mm -hmm. not the situation. Um, mm -hmm. So do not try to like, throw yourself into something like if you get an audition or you see an audition and you're like oh i think i can do that and halfway through the audition suddenly you're like i actually can't do this that is okay like we yeah. are in a situation where you can kind of self-evaluate and figure out in this time like what is best for me and like how am i navigating through this world through the self-tape world which is like phoebe loves self-tapes some people hate self-tapes like they mm -hmm. cannot do it they hate everything about it and that's okay so we all just kind of have to like rely on each other and support each other and help each other and if mm -hmm. you see like it is so great that all of you came to this workshop today because that is something that you can do and like you can learn from this but you don't have to turn around and like turn out 10 self-tapes tomorrow because <laughs> this is like a step forward that isn't going to put you in like mm -hmm. that kind of feeling so i think that's worth being said Yes, um, I, question okay. related to that. If you don't have an agent currently, is now a good time to submit or are agencies holding off from looking at new people until it's safer slash more normal? Noel, would you like to speak on this? Yes, absolutely. So it going off of what Noel said, it that's up to you. Um, I will be transparent in saying that we are signing some folks. Um, but at the same time, that doesn't mean that if you're not submitting now that you'll never have an agent. Uh, remember that like n actors don't general I mean obviously like Phoebe has worked on the commercial right now but in general the industry is not operating as normal a lot of actors by and large don't have work so whenever things get back up and running you you've been here for me I just I'm just saying whenever get, things get back up and running whenever that is a lot of actors are going to need work um, so you're going to be competing with a lot of folks but with that said, that doesn't mean just because you don't have an agent doesn't mean that you're not going to get work. If you feel ready to submit right now, I say go ahead, but also don't feel like, I, I, I definitely would say if you don't feel like submitting right now is a good time, just don't do it. Because like, we will know, like we see, we, we still see like, like dozens and dozens and dozens of submissions. And we can tell the people that are definitely submitting just because they feel like they have to. And in a sense, it's kind of like normal times, like do it when you're ready. Um, yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, going to some audience questions. Um, should we have custom made backgrounds in our self tape shot? And do we need to zoom in and out after we slate? So I think we talked about zooming in and out after we slate is a really great mm -hmm. way to like showcase who you, what you might look like in real life. Um, but custom made backgrounds. Um, Phoebe, do you want to take that one? Oh, I don't have the um, yeah, by custom made, do we mean like something that we can hang so that we have control over what our background looks like? Yeah, I think the background you can control, like, yeah. you know, like photo paper or, you know, fabric cloth. Yeah. Yeah, I think that it is not, I found it really useful when I was traveling because I never knew if I was going to be able to find a blank wall. Um, but as like part of an essential self tape kit, I don't know that it is like, tip top of my priority list. I do think that like, if you are gonna invest in a backdrop, uh, I would not invest in uh, white. Having had a white backdrop, I feel silly. I look way better with a bright blue or a bright green. And you will find in like film studios too, where they are shooting auditions or previously where they were shooting auditions, that's usually what the like industry standard is. So if you are gonna choose to invest in one, which I don't think that you absolutely need to, uh, don't be a fool like me and get a white one. I had a white one too, and it is so, it gets so dirty. It washes you out, and you gotta iron it really aggressively. I, yeah, got a, I recommend a blue, especially as a, as a person of color, a blue makes me look way better. Sweet, love it. Um, is there additional equipment we should have besides a phone for videotaping? Should we have a camera or DSLR, or are phones okay to use to videotape? Um, I will take this one. I will tell you guys, like, if you have a smartphone that has a really great quality video, they literally sell ring lights that you can hook your phone to and then just, like, play it from there. And I will tell you that the majority of self-tapes coming in right now are all from iPhones. Um, you do not need to spend $5,000 on a camera to get a good self-tape. If you want to do that, 
go right ahead. You can probably start a headshot business while you're at it if you're paying for that much money for a camera. Um, but like you, you do not need to buy some like crazy high quality expensive camera for that. And I, I also have a ring light right in front of me that I'll show everybody has a spot for you to put your phone. So you can just hook yes. your phone right in here. Perfect. Very so, cool. Yeah. I love it. And that, this um, is not expensive. No, they're like, I think one of the like best ones that I see on Amazon is like 11 bucks. Um, so like some of them mm -hmm. are, are that cheap. Um, this might not be relevant, but I wonder how much you need to spend on a headshot. Do you need a professional photographer focusing on headshots? Noel, can you speak to this? Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, please, 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 please get a professional headshot photographer. Um, and not just like any photographer, one that does specialize in actor headshots because there's a different, there, there's uh, the big difference I see when people don't use a headshot photographer, there's a big difference between a portrait photographer and a headshot photographer. Portrait photographer is a more like, it's like for, and I, I was about to say it's like for your family shots. It's not that I'm, I'm not saying I, I myself do portrait photography. So <laughs> it's a lot more to it than that. Um, but it's like more subjective. It does more, it, it does a lot. It's like more an artful form of photography. Headshot photographers specialize in headshot photography because your headshot is used to make you pop. It's basically the way to make casting say like, wow, this person looks perfect for the role. Um, so yeah, they make basically, I know this sounds like so unprofessional and not like the best word, but they make your face look really nice. So yeah, that's basically it. Well, it looks like Noel, Noel has gotten, um, it had maybe had another internet issue. Um, but let me, I will just ask, you know, probably let's, you know, let's go to like the last one or two questions. Um, this is a pretty easy one, Noel, if you want to take this. Do you think backstage is a reliable source for jobs? Um, to be honest, no. Mm -hmm. um, given, I would say, like putting aside like my personal feelings about backstage, um, having an, Having a backstage profile, I would say, wouldn't really give you up, like, uh, give you um, an up and up on your career per se. But at, if anything, it's like a good way just to see like what's going on in the industry, what's available out there. But like, I know a lot of agencies like we don't use backstage. Um, I yeah, have a backstage I, story. Oh, yeah. No, go ahead. Terrible. Gonna, in short, just like it's not needed. If you have it, it's fine. No. But yeah you're not gonna you have, have to, to sift have through a lot yeah you do mm -hmm. yes yes and so so as a theater casting director i would post all of my um uh breakdowns on theater in chicago which is like the best theater like theater website to find theater auditions theater in chicago.com left hand side of the page auditions best place most updated amazing um and so I like had my email and everything on there so people could send me submissions. And um, I had an actor be like, hey, I submitted to your project via Backstage. And I was like, what are you talking about? I did not post that on Backstage. Like, I don't have an account. I don't know what you're talking about. So it turns out Backstage like ripped that off of Theater in Chicago, put it on Backstage, was charging people to submit for this project never even told me like created an account in my name because they found my email all this stuff so this is a thing that backstage does is like they basically like create an account for people and don't tell them and then like i logged on one day because i was like hey can i have my password i didn't know that i created an account and i had like 35 people thinking that they submitted to audition for this show that I was casting and I had no clue that it was a thing and like they had paid for Thanks. memberships in order to do that yeah. and I was like oh my god I'm so sorry like I I didn't know this was a thing so I literally had to start putting on my breakdowns like please do not submit to the backstage version of this show of because it doesn't exist um so then break like 
backstage stopped stealing my breakdowns and putting them on because I put Ugh. that language in the breakdown. But like yeah. it is, um, it's a third party website that charges you for things. And like, I always tell people like, go to theater in Chicago, go mm-hmm. to the, um, the union website, go to mm-hmm. playbill.com and look up the auditions because they take them from the union website and put them there. And mm-hmm. yeah, ugh, backstage. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. We have a lot of other questions coming in. So let me, um, do you, uh, Phoebe and Noel, do you have any additional tips on showcasing your personality now that will mostly be limited to just our slate audition and maybe an introductory email? Um, I think it totally depends on who you are submitting to and what the nature of the submission is. Um, I think the hope is that like your personality and what is unique about you comes through in the way you interpret the material. Um, But I have like, if I am submitting for a director that I've worked with before and I like feel strongly about the material at the end of my slate, right before I say thank you and cut it, I'll be like, and I really appreciate like being seen for this. This is one of my favorite plays or whatever. Like, I think I don't like to stress a lot about like showing personality because I think that can be kind of a trap. I think that um, as much as you can just be like genuine in your work and in like Mm -hmm. the like excitement you may have about the work that you're about to show them, uh, mm-hmm. you can be and otherwise I, I don't think you need to be like too too in your head about that yeah no I I agree it it does largely depend I actually um we hosted a webinar for our clients where we um we uh, we interviewed um a New York casting director who's worked on um Harry Potter and um Moulin Rouge recently and he said we he said that like we'd love to get to know people's personalities and then, like a webinar, maybe three days before, they were like, "We just need the slate." So it's just like it. It really depends. Um, like what people said, kind of like go with your heart. Like if if you feel that it kind of like garners that, then maybe put something a little bit in. Otherwise, yeah, don't don't really worry about it. Um, we're 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 still in a time where like even casting directors are trying to figure out like what they want and what they need from remote auditions and self tapes. It's it's truly a different world and we can we can give you all the like hints and tips but at the you know at the same time yeah it's it's hard for everybody right now so and i'll even tell you sometimes casting directors especially right now don't even know what they want either like yeah yeah. i've also found that a lot of commercial auditions right now will just instead of like giving you a script they'll be like can you talk about like i just did that it was like can you just talk about a road trip that you liked yeah (laughs) Absolutely, yes. So your mm-hmm. your person with that structure of a commercial, you really don't have to worry about it because it's just you authentically speaking to a memory mm-hmm. or something that you like. Yeah. Sweet. Um, question about headshots. Uh, Naya wears her hair in different Afrocentric styles. Should she get headshots with different type of hairstyles that she does? No. Would you feel comfortable taking this question? Of course. Um, yeah, I would say go with what you are comfortable with. Um, we, I would say that most of our um, actors of color have some sort of like different headshot when it's like more than one headshot, I would say, sorry. Um, when it comes to especially styling their hair. Um, yeah, I, it's a tough question because that's very, it's, that's kind of like up to you again, that's up to your comfortability level. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say also that like, if you had your headshot with your natural hair, that you have like less of a chance of getting a role or getting seen because of that, if that makes sense. Like if you have your headshot and your natural hair, that's, that is okay. If you have one with your natural hair and one with your hair straightened, that's okay too. Great, I agree. And like casting typically also works with that. So. Yes, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, 
a question about unions, which I will take because I am not a part of any union. So I am <laughs> safe to answer this question very democratically. Um, uh, so the question is, are job opportunities only available to actor union members? The answer is absolutely not. 65% of the jobs in Chicago are non-union. Um, the majority of the jobs are non-union. Um, in New York and LA, the race to get your union card is like a big thing. Totally understandable because, <coughs> excuse me, the majority of the jobs in New York and LA are union. Um, but in Chicago specifically, you want to kind of like put off from joining the union until you have to. So that's after three SAG after jobs, then you have to join. Um, <coughs> excuse me, my allergies are just killing me. Um, or um, if you're part of the EMC program, you have to get 25 or 50 weeks, it's kind of changed. Um, in my opinion, I always tell people don't join the EMC yeah. program, just like yeah, go until you get an equity contract. And then when somebody offers you, then you can go equity. Um, I have also taken time to like, if an actor's like, hey, I think I'm ready to go equity, I have gone out of my way to like talk to casting directors and be like, hey, would you hire this person on an equity contract? Like, is that something you would offer them? Do you think that they are ready to go? Um, because one once you go, you cannot go back. So if you go too quickly, then you you can't undo it. Um, like it's it's not something that you can kind of go back from. So you don't want to go too quick. You want to kind of figure out when the best time for you to turn union is. Of course, if you're booking like a bunch of SAG after jobs, like you book two commercials and Chicago PD, you do have to join the union. There's no question in that. Um, but with equity, you kind of have a little bit more time. But like I said, 65% of Chicago is non-union. There's a million incredible non-union theaters in Chicago. So no, the work is out there for literally everybody. I think that's all we have for audience questions. Unless I missed any um, that you can see. Yeah, for me, I'm fine. I'm putting the cheese directly on the bottom. It looks like we're okay. Yeah. Wait, Quinn, I think you're muted. Yeah. Well, I was saying really nice stuff about everyone's questions and about I love it. <laughs> what the questions were. Um, but yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, I just want to thank everybody for coming and I wanted to let everybody know that we also have some more programming coming up at the Career Center. Um, first of all, I'm going to put my email in the chat and I am the uh, advisor for theater and uh, dance as well as cinema and TV. So please book, you know, a one-on-one -on -one, uh, advising session with me. I would love, I mean, I've, I've met with a lot of you in this chat. Um, but I'd love to see new faces over Zoom as well, um, or you know, in person someday, and uh, you know, so we can talk about you know your career strategy, um, survival jobs, really you know, like where you think you're going, uh, internships, whether there are internships or not right now. There sort of are, and uh, that's the question that we can address. Um, so I'm going to put my email in here, and you can also. Um, schedule an appointment with, with me on Handshake. The other thing is that I have two events coming up uh, tomorrow and Tuesday. So if you really liked this event and you wanna learn a little bit more about the other side of the table, like how um, directors and producers cast their shows, I have a masterclass with Sarah Clark of Compass Casting who has seen thousands of actors for hundreds of commercials and films. Um, so she's going to be talking about how she does her job. And then on Tuesday, um, I have a really, a really interesting panel that, it's actually not a panel, it's just a presentation that I'm giving. And it's about developing marketable skills for actors. So as we have been talking about, there are, there are a few fewer jobs right now for actors. So um, I wanted to create this presentation to kind of help actors and performers uh, take their resumes and take what they've done in the arts and talk about how they can kind of translate that experience for a more traditional or corporate or nonprofit, any job that's like not in the arts, how you can talk about your experience 
in theater and acting and directing, uh, choreography, all of that, and really talk about how well qualified that experience makes you. Because I will say that, you know, you have more direct, relevant, transferable skills than you think. So I would love to see all of you at that as well. Um, yeah, and I guess I'll let I guess I'll let everybody else. Um, Great. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks, everybody. This was lovely. Glad to see. Yeah. Thank you all so much. And we'll see you at the Career Center and at other events. See ya. Take care. Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm.